Okay, so this is the review sheet for ecosystems. It is 1.6 Core cool Biology. So what do food webs and food chains show? They show essentially what eats what. They show the interactions between organisms in a habitat. What is the producer of it in a food chain? It always is a green plant, and it's a green plant because they photosynthesize and they can make their own food from the sun's light energy. What is a herbivore? It's an animal that only eats plants. An omnivore is an animal that, eat that, that eats plants and meat. And a carnivore is an animal that only eats meat. Where is energy lost at each stage in a food web? So it's lost through respiration, making energy. It's lost through heat. Obviously, we're warm-blooded, so we give off heat. And it's lost in movement. They're moving around a lot of our animals. And then lost in urine and feces just as a waste product. Do your food chain using the following species? Grass, grasshopper, sparrow, sparrow hawk. We've got grass obviously in the order. What to make note is that the arrows show the flow of energy, not what eats what. And then describe using the image what is meant by the period of number on biomass. So a period of number tells us the number of organisms at each trophic level and the biomass tells us the dry weight of the organisms at each trophic level. Remember to make note that a period of number can be an inverted, whereas a pyramid of biomass will always be a triangle shape. Will always give you that triangle shape, which is shown here. If we go up then to our indicator C species, so main ones that's for stream pollution, water pollution. If the water's got a lot of blood worms or different types of worms, there's a high pollution in the water. If we have mayfire nymphs, then there's low pollution, very little pollution. Um, oxygen levels then are low in high pollution and then obviously high in low pollution. With air pollution, we have our lichens as our indicator species. If they're green and bushy, we have low pollution. If they're really crusty and dry, essentially, then they are high polluted areas. What is bioaccumulation and how does it occur in a food web? So first of all, the pollution enters river or stream. It normally tends to be like mercury, etc. from factories. Small invertebrates eat plants that have absorbed the mercury. So the invertebrates, because they're not only going to eat one plant, they'll eat one or two. So they're going to have a slightly higher amount of mercury inside them. With that, then, obviously, then the secondary consumers are going to come and eat the invertebrates, but they're not going to eat one, they'll eat two. And throughout the food chain, the level of mercury will increase until it reaches toxic levels at the predator. So the top consumer is going to have the highest amount of mercury and it's going to cause toxic and it could even cause death to the organism. How have humans affected the amount of certain species in a food chain? So through deforestation, removing their habitats, overfishing, especially in waters, and then hunting of specific animals. What will happen if sewage and fertilisers get into a pond? So the fertilisers will enter the pond through excess rain after a farmer has spread it. The excess fertiliser um, causes algae to grow on the surface. With that, then the plants at the bottom of the pond or the lake beneath die as no sunlight can reach the bottom. So therefore, they cannot photosynthesise. Photosynthesize. Oh, scroll over. Ooh. They can't photosynthesize. With that, then, as there's no photosynthesis taking place, the oxygen levels decrease in the water. As oxygen levels in the water decrease, our poor fish in the water, they die. And we go on to intensive farming so the advantages of intensive farming we are looking at for all of them they have a large quantity of yield produced so the amount of crop etc we are producing we're gonna have lots and lots of it by adding fertilizers we get healthy growth of plants because they have enough nutrients for what they need to grow Disadvantages then of different intensive farming methods so with eutrophication is the use of fertilizers 
pesticides. They're going to reduce biodiversity because pesticides are sprayed on crops to kill different pests. So we're going to reduce the number in a population and we'd reduce the biodiversity of a species. Um, with battery farming then, so locking the chickens in the cages to get as much eggs as possible, um, they spread disease and it could cause disease in the chickens and can cause harm to them. So there is our review sheet for our ecosystems.